Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today, Membership Ideas for your next outstanding award application presented by the Utah chapter. Um, I have a, had a couple questions and did wanna let everybody know that this will be recorded um, and will be sent to you um, later this afternoon. And we will also be posting in the online resource guide. So again, like to welcome you. Uh, the Utah chapter of NIGP board will be making the presentation today. And that's comprised of uh, President Zach Christensen, President-elect Tanya Hodges, Past President Colette Brown, Past President and Chapter Ambassador Jason Steinman, Board Member Christopher Hughes, and Vice President Brooke Smith. Uh, during the presentation, you can submit questions into the Q&A box on the screen, and we'll take those during the specified parts of the presentation. And you also can add anything into the chat as well. I will remind all the speakers to please make sure that you unmute yourselves uh, before you make uh, your presentation. And with that, Tanya, I'd like to turn it over to you to get us started. Great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We appreciate it. We really appreciate this opportunity to spend some time with all of you today and are so grateful to NIGP for uh, the receiving the Outstanding Chapter Award for membership in 2020. And we are happy to share our application ideas with you, the things that we had submitted. Uh, hopefully there'll be some ideas here that you might be able to take back to your own chapters and to help with your membership and to boost membership, increase your membership and to provide more and better offerings to your members as well. We'd first like to welcome you to Utah. You can see a picture here of Mesa Arch and Moab. Once we have COVID taken care of and you're ready to travel again, we'd invite you to come out and visit. We have five national parks as well as many national monuments recreation areas and we did just have a snowstorm and we have wonderful skiing here. So it's a great place to come visit. Uh, we have a big tourism industry here and, and so we would be happy for you to come visit and let us know. We'd be happy to have you join us with our chapter or even meet up with you. So we, we'd love to meet, be able to meet you. So here's our panelists for today that will be sharing this presentation with you as Jennifer had uh, introduced us. So if you have any questions after this webinar, feel free to reach out to any of us. We are happy to help and, and give you some ideas and, and what we've been able to do in our chapter and accomplish. And, and if we can help you, we would be more than happy to. So we'd like to start out with a question that was also part of the application. How, was, how well does your chapter market membership benefits and resources? And what are your methods for membership retention and growth? If you'd like to share some of the ideas that have worked in your chapters in the Q&A, we'd love to share some of those with the group. Um, in the meantime, we'll try and capture those as we go. But yeah, give us some ideas. What's working for you? We're, we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to do the best that we can to help our agencies and our members. And we all have different ideas and, and what works for one chapter may work for another. We'd love to see your ideas. As, a, as for a chapter, we, we do love this quote that we're sharing with you today. Unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And we truly believe this, that if we can unify as a chapter and have those networking and, and opportunities to be able to get to know each other better, we can rely on each other as resources, which is so huge, especially in situations like we've been dealing with this past year. We're facing situations and procurements that we've never had to deal with before. And it's so nice to be able to bounce ideas off of others. And so that's the beautiful benefit of NIGP and membership. So where there's teamwork and collaboration, those wonderful things can be achieved. And our chapter membership brings that strength to our chapters and member agencies 
We are there to support and to provide networking opportunities, professional development, as well as the opportunity to build camaraderie amongst our members. Here in Utah, we are a pretty tight knit procurement community. We feel very comfortable reaching out to each other with questions or asking advice and have other committees in Utah, such as EDPAC, so that's an Education Purchasing Advisory Committee, and there are other committees as well that brings together procurement professionals from the state and the local agencies that builds a strong network between each other. And we are truly friends and we do reach out to each other frequently. And, and that's where the chapter membership can really help each other out is to be that resource for you. Tanya, I was going to just add, this is Jennifer, um, John yeah. did uh, post in the Q&A that for their chapter, chapter-based webinars have helped in maintaining membership engagement, especially during COVID-19, which is very true. Oh, very true. Thank you, John, so much. Absolutely. We have had to think out of the box this year, and webinars are a fantastic resource to be able to stay connected. Thank you so much. So back in 2018, uh, we, we started seeing some significant growth in our chapter. So we were honored as a chapter to receive a national award at Forum in 2019 in Austin for the highest percentage increase in 2018. And that year we were able to change from a small to a medium sized chapter with a 60% increase in size. And this was huge and it wasn't without much work and effort by our chapter leadership and also uh, partnering with the state of Utah Division of Purchasing to make that happen. And then in 2019, we had an additional 14% increase in our chapter membership. So we have experienced quite significant changes in our membership and it's now our opportunity to try to keep up with those changes and to be able to provide the offerings that a medium-sized chapter needs versus what a small group would need. And then for the past few years, we have had younger professionals involved in our chapter leadership, serving on our board of directors and as chapter officers. And so in our chapter, we, have a three-year uh, position where you start out as vice president, then you move to president, and then past president. And so we've had the great opportunity to have some of our young professionals run for these offices and then be involved for that three-year commitment. And it has been a phenomenal experience. This has brought fresh insight to the needs of our procurement community and they've assisted us in bringing technology more forward in our communications with the chapter. And with, and you'll see during our presentation today as well, um, they were highly uh, involved in getting us a new chapter website. And one of those is continuing on as our chapter webmaster. And this is such a great untapped resource. They are a wealth of ideas and talent that can be used throughout your chapter. And we would encourage you to get them involved in outreach and marketing for your chapter. I, I think a lot of us are in the same boat where we're going to see a significant number of our workforce retire this decade. And we need the help of these young professionals to recruit more people into the profession. And they will also get your chapter up to speed with technology, which has become, especially this past year, more and more important. They can boost your chapter with new ideas and new perspectives, as well as enthusiasm that will permeate your chapter and revitalize it. And I, I like this quote that we had found, they are, youth are a dynamic force that we are not tapping into, and we need to use the tools that they understand. So again, get into that technology and have them help you with it because that's what they understand. And they are a wealth of knowledge and ideas for you to use in your chapter. So we would highly encourage you to reach out to your young professionals and get them involved either as board members or chapter officers or even committee members. 
just get them on that volunteer path and you will see some really great things happen in your chapter. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I am Zach Christensen. I am the current president of uh, the Utah chapter. Uh, last year, I was the vice president. Uh, I am currently the director of uh, purchasing and contracts for the Utah State Board of Education. Uh, Lori Myers once said, if you want the answer, then you have to ask the question. And that's what we did. We wanted to find out what was important to our chapter members and how we could better serve them. And to do that, we had three surveys that we issued throughout the year. Uh, and we asked a variety of different questions. Uh, for example, how can we help you grow professionally? What kind of uh, exam preparation can we provide? Are you interested in a member mentor program? Would you be interested in volunteering for the chapter? What are meeting chap or chapter meeting topics ideas that you would like to see? Uh, who would you like to nominate for buyer and manager of the year? And just a general open feedback. Tell us what you were thinking. Uh, and we actually had some great lessons learned. We had some great feedback. Uh, one of the first things we learned was it's best to ask the surveys during our chapter meetings. And the reason being is we could actually provide some incentive uh, for the chapter members to respond. We got a bunch of just $5 gift cards to Starbucks, to Maverick, to, to different things. And then we would pull out just a couple of uh, survey responses and those people would be able to receive that gift card for completing their surveys. And when we did that, we got approximately 60 uh, survey results from uh, those chapter meetings. So it was a really great way to not only get that feedback, but also to uh, pull the members uh, in and get them participating in that as well. Uh, some of the other things that we learned is that despite being very busy, most of our chapter was willing to volunteer. Uh, that was one way that we actually filled some of our committees uh, is we actually had people who were interested in participating at the meetings for a couple hours a month and others who were willing to do whatever was necessary to help the chapter. So it was a great way to identify those who uh, may not be as outgoing or as vocal about their willing to part willingness to participate, but still be able to pull them in and use their talents to help their chapter develop and grow. Uh, professional growth is also very important to our chapter. Uh, there were a lot of different uh, responses we got back. Uh, some of those included different online classes and things that they could do on their own, uh, mentor programs, entering uh, those different relationships, as well as a study group for exam preparation. And our chapter, we found the people were doing amazing things. When we asked about uh, the buyer and manager of the year and what sort of things they were doing that would uh, justify that. It was really fascinating to see how our chapter was really impacting and influencing not only public procurement, but also their communities. And it was a really awesome experience to see that. Uh, so as a board, we reviewed all of the different data and the suggestions from the surveys, and we decided to implement a new mentorship program. Uh, Tanya, if you could go to the next slide. So from the survey, we identified at least 15 individuals who had indicated they were willing and uh, able and excited to be mentors. Uh, so to create a new program, we looked at a variety of different resources that were already out there. Uh, we met with uh, different chapters. So we've met with uh, SCAGPO and uh, VAGP, the Virginia Association of Government Purchasing got their mentorship programs. We looked at the Utah State Bar Association. We looked at the Federal Acquisition Institute, and then just the different uh, prior experiences that uh, different chapter members had in mentoring others. And it was a really fascinating look to see what was effective and what did not work so well or where there were areas that we could tailor it to our chapter's unique needs. So during this process, we created a manual and we reviewed uh, the different processes, the expectations, the time commitments, the responsibilities of both the mentor and the mentee, uh, how they could evaluate whether it was working well or if they wanted to change or to uh, look for some other opportunities, suggestions for their meetings, action plans, and uh, the different competencies were effective and necessary uh, for 
good public procurement participation. And so we uh, provided how we could encapsulate all of that and provided sample mentor agreement templates. And then we helped connect those who I had identified as being willing and able to be mentors with those who had indicated that they were interested in mentor. And we included the list of everyone who was who had identified as a mentor with their contact information and the different skills that they had identified as uh, one of their strengths that they felt comfortable helping others with. And it was a, a great way that we could help build that connection and that strength within our chapter and also help uh, the next generation of public procurement professionals develop those skills as well. Uh, Tanya, next slide, please. Study groups. Um, from the survey results, certification help and preparation was also an area that we had identified as something that we could do and a benefit that we could provide to our chapter. Uh, earlier on, I had presented on the CPPB and CPP application process and how to submit those and prepare to take the exam. And from that, we had created the first CPPB study group for the May 19 exam. Uh, we met each week for about eight weeks prior to the exam window, and those who had participated, uh, each one was expected to be prepared for that study session, and we each taught uh, different areas of content from the study prep guide. And it was this shared experience that also helped create and strengthen those bonds and relationships uh, with those who had participated. And the first study group, we only had three participants, and it was me, our chapter president, Colette, and the past president, uh, Jason. And I am proud to say that we all pass, and I would like to attribute that uh, that study group was definitely one of the contributing factors. It was a great way to not only prepare, but also to demonstrate that knowledge by helping uh, teach uh, and explain those concepts to others. Uh, because of the success in the first uh, study group, we held another one in the fall of that year, and uh, we had uh, six participants, so it had doubled in size. And uh, as far as I can remember, everyone who had participated in that has passed the CPPB that they have taken. And this has been a success we have tried to replicate and we have started study groups for the NIGP CPP as well. So it's something that is really easy to do and I think it's a, a great benefit uh, for the chapter as well. Uh, Tanya, would you move on to the next slide? All right, thank you. So last year, uh, I hope you can appreciate that we had made a concerted effort to connect with many different groups and tried to uh, promote not only our local chapter, but also public procurement to uh, a lot of different groups. Uh, in our chapter, there are many recovering lawyers. And uh, like many of you, we receive different protests from vendors. Uh, and they often hire local attorneys to assist them in these administrative appeals. In my experience, I have seen that uh, there are a lot of the same misunderstandings of code or misapplication of our uh, administrative rules uh, and just a lack of general knowledge on how our profession works and how the code applies in these situations. And so to help everyone in public procurement and the vendor community and the local attorneys as well, uh, I was able to draft an article on in the Utah Bar Journal on protests in public procurement. Uh, it was the first article that actually addressed protests in public procurement, so I was pretty excited. Uh, we actually had some great feedback as a result of this. Uh, we've actually had other attorneys who have posted response articles in the, the Bar Journal as well, uh, explaining their experience with uh, protests and appeals in the public procurement sector as well. So it, it was just another way that we were able to uh, make an outreach into other communities to help support the public procurement effort here in Utah. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much, Zach. Um, appreciate that and Tanya as well. Um, we have great people here in the state of Utah and Colette and I were talking earlier about how it's amazing that our small little chapter here in Utah 
um, is making such great inroads and we just appreciate that support. Um, I'm Jason Steinman. I had previously served as the Utah chapter president in 2018 and I currently have the opportunity to serve as one of the three Area 9 chapter ambassadors and that is a, a really great privilege and an honor for, for me to do that. Um, I'm excited to talk a little bit about um, some initiatives that we did um, as a board to create greater member engagement in 2019. So in May of that year, the Utah chapter of NIGP in, co in cooperation with the state of Utah Division of Purchasing hosted its first reverse trade show. This trade show was a tremendous success with our space reaching capacity within the first few, re uh, the first few weeks of registration being open. The reverse trade show featured a keynote speaker with several educational breakout sessions during the day. The reverse trade show allowed 307 vendor attendees to meet with 29 different public agencies with additional public agencies attending the breakout sessions virtually. One-on-one -on -one sessions between vendors and entity directors were also held, which provided an excellent opportunity for face-to-face -face meetings and a greater building of the networking relationship between the agency and the vendor. We had several members of the chapter serve on the Reverse Trade Show Committee in various capacities, which offered new and exciting opportunities for chapter volunteers. A reverse, our reverse trade show committee was honestly the heart and soul of our reverse trade show. The group of us who were on that committee became really good friends. And I had the opportunity to be the, the committee chairman. And my number one message to the committee was, if we fail, at least we learn. And our whole objective was to try something new um, and we ended up being incredibly successful. The experience offered new and enriching opportunities and content for chapter members. Additionally, the $30,000 which we raised was used to assist chapter members in furthering their professional growth and development. This also marked our first joint effort with the State of Utah Division of Purchasing. Chris is gonna talk a little bit more about that partnership. The partnership went very well with volunteers from both groups serving on the Reverse Trade Show Committee. The experience was a highly positive and motivating one. If you're looking for a high impact activity that not only provides a, a direct benefit to your membership, but also engages those members, a Reverse Trade Show is something I would strongly encourage you to consider. We have developed a reverse trade show manual that provides ideas and direction for how to get a reverse trade show started from the ground up. And we are more than willing to share that information with you. So if that's something you're interested in, please reach out to me. My email is included in this presentation and I will gladly share that with you. Tanya, let's move on. Hey, Jason, this is Jennifer. If I can just jump in real quick. If Please. you send that to me, I will post that we actually have a tab in the resource guide that has all things reverse trade show. And I'd love to post it there so everybody can see that. Even better. I'd love to do that. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, in an effort to educate university students on the procurement profession and to encourage membership in the Utah chapter of NIGP, Several chapter leaders attended multiple career fairs in the fall of 2019. Our chapter had never done this before, so we did not quite know what to expect, but it ended up being a good experience, not only for the students who were able to learn about us, but also for us as chapter leaders to understand our marketing and our, message, our, our messaging to the outside world. The Utah chapter provides complimentary student memberships and currently have no student members. We recognize, as Tanya mentioned earlier, that the procurement profession will be undergoing drastic changes in the coming decade and ensuring a strong pipeline of qualified and interested candidates is central to our mission. Many students who visited the NIGP booth had never heard of NIGP, nor had they ever heard of public procurement. The experience provided an excellent opportunity to not only provoke our chapter, but the profession as a whole as well. If any of you have ever done career fairs, 
I personally would love to um, hear some feedback on what the experience was like for you um, and for your chapter, but also if, if you were able to recruit any students. The career fairs we participated in were done on the general university level and were not focused specifically in the business school. And so we talked to every person, regardless of their major, um, and of course had a greater interest in those who are business students. Um, but we would love to hear any feedback that you may have on your experience and what we could possibly do better to have uh, a, a greater return on the experience. Tanya. In June of 2019, the chapter held a Utah chapter of NIGP night at the Salt Lake Bees baseball game. They're our local minor league baseball team here in the state. The chapter was able to obtain discounted tickets and subsidized the cost to the members. This event proved incredibly beneficial to the membership because it provided an opportunity to network and connect outside of formal chapter meetings and training. Because of the subsidized cost, members were able to bring their family members and friends. It proved to be an enjoyable way to create new relationships and strengthen existing ones. Activities like this allow members to feel more comfortable interacting with one another which in turn leads to greater participation and volunteerism within the chapter. It always amazes me when you can get together outside of a, a formal work environment, how exponentially the relationships are strengthened. In 2017, Salt Lake City had the honor of hosting the NIGP forum and many of the relationships and the friendships that I now really love and respect within my chapter started at forum. And so I would really encourage you as chapter leaders to find ways outside of the box and outside of your formal meetings that allow your members to interact and to build relationships and to get to know one another. Because those outside activities ultimately benefit and affect your meetings because members feel more comfortable associating with one another. They'll have greater confidence in volunteering and participating in the chapter. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Chris Hughes and I'm the Director of Purchasing for the State of Utah. In that role, I generally oversee the state of Utah's executive branch agency as they go out for the procurement of goods and services. I also manage the state's cooperative contract program. And by statute, I also have the requirement to make procurement training available to procurement units and persons who do business with procurement units in the state of Utah. And I overtook the role of uh, chief procurement officer in the state of Utah about three years ago. And in that role at that time, the division of purchasing had already established a quarterly procurement training that was really well attended by uh, procurement professionals throughout the state of Utah. On average, we would have about 200 persons attending that training. Uh, during that training, it would be an all day event in which we would go over changes to the procurement code. We would talk about uh, applications of how to utilize the procurement code. And we would uh, just engage procurement professionals in a way to provide training. But as I took over the responsibility of being the chief procurement officer in the state of Utah, I realized that there were greater opportunities to collaborate. And one of those ways of collaborating was partnering with uh, NIGP Utah in order to ensure that the training that uh, the Division of Purchasing in the state of Utah was providing and NIGP Utah was uh, providing in their training meetings was uh, linking up and that it was being uh, best utilized. Oftentimes, uh, I compared ourselves as kind of two trains passing in the night in that uh, we, we all had, we had the same mission that we wanted to provide excellent procurement training and provide for opportunities for procurement professionals in the state of Utah to collaborate with each other. But oftentimes we didn't talk to each other. So some of our events 
were held during the same week, creating conflicts for procurement professionals being able to attend both of those events. Um, we also uh, had different opportunities that uh, created conflict within our, within our memberships. So when I took over as the chief procurement officer for the state of Utah, I met with NIGP Utah to discuss with them the idea of partnering up and uh, really working within our membership groups to be able to ensure that, they, that everyone was getting training and that we were providing training that worked with each other and that we were looking for ways to collaborate in the future. Um, because just as this quote says, the best collaborations create something bigger than the sum of what each person can create on their own. Um, I, I believe that uh, Utah has been, been able to get to new heights as we've brought together uh, the Division of Purchasing's uh, trainings and NIGP Utah's trainings. And it's brought, brought a lot more collaboration into the state of Utah in terms of being able to uh, provide suggestions to the Utah legislature for modifications to the Utah Procurement Code or allowing us to be able to meet to discuss the needs of each entity in the state of Utah. By having this partnership, we've been able to create a more robust uh, state cooperative contract program in which uh, all the needs of public entities are discussed and we're able to create cooperative contracts that help every public entity in the state of Utah to be able to make quick and easy purchases. And it also had the unattended consequence of this year having a group that we could all turn to to collaborate with each other as we were all uh, fighting against COVID-19 and making purchases. I don't think that there was a day or a week that went by over the last year in which I wasn't talking to somebody from NIGP Utah in terms of uh, seeking help or giving help on making purchases that were being looked at by all public entities in, the youth, in Utah, whether it was for PPE or whether it was for other testing supplies. And through this collaboration and partnership that we've created, uh, we were able to ensure that every public entity was able to find and secure the necessary supplies that they needed to uh, throughout this year. Uh, this partnership has been one in which we've seen growth beyond what I was expecting. I thought when we entered into this partnership that it would just give um, my employees and other others in the state of Utah, an opportunity for a, additional training. But as you can see from everything that's been discussed to this point, it's provided them beyond everything that, everything that, including that and beyond. We've seen collaboration both in and outside of the workforce. We've been able to secure uh, retention with some employees is that they've been able to get the training and collaborate with others. And I've seen some of my employees be able to collaborate with some of the public entities in the state of Utah and be able to find uh, jobs that match their uh, career goals. It's, it's really been a uh, positive influence to be able to see everything that's come out of this partnership. And I would encourage uh, any other NIGP groups that are here to reach out to your state procurement offices and see what collaboration that you can have with them. Because um, as we continue to move forward with public procurement in the, the upcoming decade, I, I can only see that collaboration is, is needed. And uh, through that collaboration is a, a good way of getting better training, uh, securing that the workforce is properly motivated and has all of the tools necessary to succeed. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Colette Brown. Uh, I was the uh, president last year and past president this year. And I have the wonderful opportunity to talk about our new website that we uh, had been using for the past year. And uh just why how we got there and why we like it so much and really how it's really helped us with our membership next all right uh when it comes to uh searching for the right website uh for years past we used the weebly platform which was nice it uh it provided out facing information uh, to both our members and those that 
were interested in learning more about our website. But as our chapter was growing, uh, it became more and more apparent just how much we needed something more robust and more dynamic. Um, we did not have profiles available through the Weebly platform. And so we were able to, so that was one of the reasons for searching for a good chapter manager. Uh, we came upon Club Express. Uh, we found them to be the best value. Um, something that I really liked is that they post their pricing directly on their website. Um, so it's just there for everyone to see. Um, you don't need to reach out and get a quote for just a website or anything like that. And um, along with that, they, they're very customer service centered. And so when you get a new website, you set it up. And there's multiple um, one-time setup fees available depending upon your understanding of setting up websites and code and stuff like that. Um, I have a fairly decent knowledge of coding from my college days. And so I was able to select what, we, what they list as the starter pack um, setup package. And so it's really nice because they, um, with that one-time payment that you know exactly how much it's gonna cost, you get things set up and they help you um, get your web page, all your web pages going, your home page is set up. They help you upload all of your current members information into the website so you're not like manually entering anything. Um, and so that they, so that whole process is there. But what I love is that even though we're now up and live and we've been doing this for over a year now, um, they're still responsive, whether it's by calling them by phone or email. Uh, example, this past week, um, we had some issues with formatting on an email that we were sending out. Uh, I was able to give them a call. Not only were they were able to help and identify the problem in the call, but then they sent up following emails, um, multiple emails to make sure that it truly was addressed and ready to go. And so it was just really nice that they, uh, just the customer service has, has been wonderful. Next. So this is just a snip from their website. So anyone can go there and see it. Um, this is how you can see how much things cost. They have a, a base fee of $24 a month. And then I'm not sure where the number changes, but if you exceed a certain number of active members, then that's when it starts slowly to go up a little bit, um, which is really nice because um, if you have, you know, if you, if you start out with 100 members and then, you know, a quarter of them for whatever reason does not renew, you're not charged for that, those 25 members, which is really nice. Um, and then on the left side, you can see where it says one time setup fee. There's other fees if you feel so inclined. Um, another thing I forgot to mention that I really like is that it's all or nothing kind of thing. So when you activate a new website with them, you have uh, access to all of their different features. If you choose not to use them, that's on you. Um, there are some, a couple of features that just did not fit within what our chapter does, but we have access to them if we feel so inclined. Uh, next. All right, um, so going into some of the features that have really helped, especially with our membership, um, calendar and registration. So uh, it's really nice that because we have profiles now for our members, um, our members can log in and register for an event. And then it not only acknowledges that they signed up for that event, but it stays in their profile so that, um, you know, time passes and you want to know, you know, for education credits or uh, for we've been working on our scholarship to be more tailored around volunteering and attending things to kind of encourage that uh, people to do that. Um, this snip right here is from our March calendar. Uh, and so this in March this year, we had a chapter meeting, uh, but we also um, kind of, as Chris Hughes was mentioning, we, uh, we also listed an event for the, what they call as a brown bag seminar, seminar um, through the state purchasing. And so they're different colors um, because they're different events. And so uh, for example, a social event could be blue and our reverse trade show could be purple or something like that, which kind of helps members easily differentiate between the different kinds of events listed. 
Um, another nice thing is you're able to a lot, run a lot of different varying reports on this chapter uh, and this website. And uh, so you can see who has registered for an event, how many have registered for an event. Um, if you sent out an invitation, you can see how many of them uh, came back to register and if you need to send up follow up emails. Next. All right, um, so that was the outward facing. And so on the flip side, um, when it comes to creating an event, um, it's very customizable, but it's also very simple at the same time because it's almost like a checklist and you go through different uh, um, varying uh, check, click mark, check marks to click yes or no kind of thing. For example, um, before you know this amazing, wonderful pandemic hit us, we were doing another reverse trade show this year. And so uh, vendors could sign up through our calendar um, because they are not members of our chapter. We had it set up side so that they can sign up as a non-member and pay for and register for the event. On the flip side, we had a different calendar event available for our members to log in, sign up for, and they didn't need to pay for it. And so uh, you can also make sure to send out, click on a certain part to click, uh, send out reminder emails uh, and stuff like that. You can see how many people um, have paid uh, for the event how much you're still waiting for and stuff like that. So it's just really nice to kind of have access on both ends. Next. All right, um, mass emailing. Um, so this was really nice for us. Um, before we moved to Club Express, our communication chair uh, was actually the one that not only set out the newsletters and announcements, but they sent them out through uh, their work email which uh, we greatly appreciated, um, but I also quite positive that it took time and uh, a lot of effort on their, their servers and stuff like that. So it was really nice to be able to have um, a, a website where we can send out an email to uh, all of our active members, uh, members of a specific committee, um, and any kind of configuration uh, and it, it goes out with the, na uh, the name of what we put in there. So um, currently, um, Brooke Smith is our communications chair. We're kind of looking for someone else because she's going to become vice president. Um, but when an email goes out, it has her name to kind of signal, hey, members, this is from um, a legit legitimate source kind of thing. Um, there are modules available to help create formatted emails, whether it's a newsletter, announcement, um, and then it's really nice because just like everything on the website, there's a lot of metrics to be found. Uh, so, and, and so for example, this is just a small snip. Um, there's actually reports as well. So in this email, whichever I clicked on, um, we sent it to 172 people at the time I clicked on it. 79 uh, had opened it at that time. Um, just like most emails, there's an opportunity for people to opt out and it looks like 16 did. And then there's a couple of emails that are kind of bad or bounced. And so we can verify with those owners to see maybe they got a new job, did we type something incorrectly? And that's just a small portion. You can actually see the emails themselves. And so it's just really nice to kind of have an understanding of where you stand and, and who's involved and, and who maybe you can reach out to or, or things like that. Next. All right, um, so I'm not sure how other chapters do this, but for many years, um, especially when I joined as vice president and president, uh, there's like this tradition where you are handed a big binder of very old documents and even maybe a USB drive. And they're like, here you go, you know, this is all for you. And, um, <laughs> and so you just hope that you didn't lose it and maybe you need it at some point. Um, so one of the things I really loved was what they call a document library. Um, where you can store uh, electronic copies of whatever you need and you create the title names of the document folders um, and you can set it so certain permissions are, are allowed. So for example, um, for most of these, our, our members need to log in to their account and profile to be able to see these documents. So they're not readily available for anyone to view. 
Um, there are certain items, especially when we did our no-show trade show this year, where there were some documents that we needed to attach for anyone to view. So I created a folder called non-member docs. Uh, and so, and then I made the permissions so everyone can see it. Um, for the board documents, I have made those permissions. So if you have, if you are and somewhere else on the website, we indicate who the board members are. And so if you are a board member, um, you can see those board documents. And so it's just really nice to be kind of like a repository of all documents. Um, you don't have to worry like a Google Docs who lost the certain documents or anything like that. Um, and, and so it's just all there in one location. And so it's just really nice. Next. Colette, before we move on, yeah. we've got a question. Oh, yeah. uh, so John Flynn is asking, how do you manage your volunteer interests, skills, and assignments? Is this something that can be done through Club Express? Uh, yes, there is actually. Um, we, I, I, I don't think uh, COVID really helped in this, but there is actually a, a web page slash module specifically set aside for volunteer opportunities where people can um, go on. And so you'd have to type out what the opportunity, volunteer opportunity is, but people can sign up for those things and then it records it on their profile and then you can kind of attribute any hours or anything like that to that. So yes, that is available through Club Express. All right, um, so a couple of other features. Um, we, the Club Express does allow for credit card payments, which was really great. So we didn't have to use more than one company. So you can pay your membership fees through our website. Um, we do, we've used, um, we post job postings uh, both through the email, mass email, as well as there's a forum feature uh, on the uh, website that we also use. Um, there's also an online member directory available. And um, in the SNP right here is just uh, for those that wanna sign up as a new member. Um, you can change the different member types as needed uh, so, for example, um, kind of like uh, Jason mentioned that we have a student membership, and so we don't charge for that one. Um, and then we have a difference between a member that's just part of the chapter NIGP, and then a member that's a member of the chapter and national NIGP. And so you can create as many distinctions as needed, and then it just takes them through the um, setup process. Next. All right, uh, last but not least, one of my favorite parts is being able to personalize and customize our website and especially our homepage. Um, I remember a conversation I had earlier this year right after forum um, and the person I was speaking with, uh, they were kind of bemoaning the fact that they really wanted to post their awards that they had received on their website and the company that they were using was just kind of taking their sweet time. And on the flip side, um, I was able to get our award posted on by our logo um, with the help of Club Express. There's a couple of things that um, I can do by myself. Uh, for example, uh, we're celebrating our 15th year anniversary and we are, uh, we've posted that on our web page. Anyone can come see and uh, join in that celebration. Um, at the beginning of next year, I will, when, you know, the 15th year anniversary has um, ended, I'll be able to just go on and ex uh, delete that module and then just, you know, remove things around so that we have a refreshed and up to date web page as we need. And so it's just, it's been really nice um, just to, to kind of work with those different modules. Next. Um, so in case it did not come through, um, I'm very passionate about Club Express. They, they've exceeded my expectations and they've been really good to work with. Uh, so if there are any other questions, um, I can definitely answer them in this phone call uh, presentation or um, you can definitely email me at my work email and I'd be happy to respond. Thank you. Tanya, you want to go back to your slideshow? Okay. 
sorry, my space bar, instead of unmuting me, wants to kick me out. My apologies. That's okay. We can keep this up right here. I think everybody can see that if you can't get that to work. We'll try it again here. One more time. There we go. So we just want to summarize. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. So for our chapter, what has helped us is getting your young professionals involved. Um, do those member surveys. Find out what your members need and want. And then you can know what to move forward with or what sort of programs to try to implement with your chapter. And also social events outside of your normal meetings or events or even work hours. Those are huge in building those relationships with one another. Our partnership with the state of Utah was a huge boost to our membership. Uh, that, that was great. And there are other agencies as well. You could go to other associations like um, associations for cities and counties or things like that. So think outside of the box. Who else can you go to um, to market your chapter? And we would recommend looking for additional member resources that you can offer your chapter members, such as the certification study groups, or we recently, thanks to NIGP, were, was able to get a scholarship to do a chapter sponsored NIGP, NIGP course, which was very successful. We had, we filled up the class within just a few days and had lots of feedback saying, we want more of these kinds of opportunities and look for those unique recruitment ideas, such as your career fairs. And if you need to look at your chapter website and how that functions for your membership, we love Club Express here in Utah. They have been, it's been fantastic. And Colette has been wonderful to help get that set up for us and to continue on as our webmaster. Um, so that might be something to consider if your website is just not meeting the needs of your membership, that might be something to consider looking at. And then find ways to promote the profession. Uh, we, we are going to be losing so many wonderful, wonderful procurement professionals that have just decades of experience. And we need to be able to find those people that are interested in procurement and, and let them know how great pro public procurement is and help them understand that there are support opportunities out there such as NIGP that can help give them the professional development and skills that they would need to be successful in their careers. And we'd like to take any questions if anyone has questions on any part portion of our presentation. Um, it looks like we do have a question from Julie Ramos. Can you please share any additional information you use to guide the group for CPPB? I just started a study group and we will begin meeting in January. Uh, Zach, if you're still available, are, if you'd be able to hop on and answer that for us. Yeah, Julie, um, we used the uh, NIGP uh, CPPB prep guide and we just took and broke that out into eight different sections and we reviewed those different sections and then uh, we got the sample test as well and then we would go through once we completed a section we would uh, take some of those sample questions and then once the entire thing was done then we would uh, try to do kind of a more comprehensive uh, test off of those questions and see how well we fared so that, that was our foundation for, for using the uh, study group. Great, thanks, Zach. And if anyone else has a question, we can stay on for just a minute here. Um, I will just, if I just can have a minute here while in case there's anybody else thinking of questions. Um, Absolutely. I do wanna remind everybody that Utah was the outstanding um, chapter in membership for 2019. So thank you for um, highlighting each of those areas. Um, I do want to remind everybody that the new application is out. Um, so I think this gives you a good um, idea of how they kind of 
uh, went about filling out their application and as you can see did a lot of um, uh, great things for their membership um, in 2019. Uh, so we are um, very excited that you are a growing um, and very enthusiastic, exciting chapter and board. Um, I think that tells uh, shows in what you all do and what you all put forth to your membership. So um, congratulations on that. So as chapters look at those outstanding applications, if you have questions, let me know. We're going to be doing a webinar in February on how to put that application together. Um, and as you can see, you'll be able to see the application. It's online right now that uh, Utah put together. So it's a good um, outline for you uh, to look at. Great. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. Any other questions? Okay, if not, I'd like to thank all the board members of Utah for their presentation and for everyone's attendance. Um, this, like I said at the beginning, this will be recorded and sent out to all of those who registered as well as we'll put it on the uh, resource guide. Uh, please take time to fill out the evaluation survey. Once uh, we end the webinar, you'll receive a prompt to take that survey. Uh, thanks again, everybody, and have a wonderful um, holiday season and new year.